In this edition, we will initially touch upon the intriguing concept of multiple dimensions within our universe. While we acknowledge the profound implications of dimensions and the multiverse, as well as the many worlds theory, we won't delve into the intricate details of their intertwined structures. Additionally, we will not explore how multiple dimensions impact consciousness and vice versa until a future video or edition of this one. Before we get to the main theme of the video, we want to delve into a groundbreaking development in quantum mechanics. As we embark on this exercise to explore the possibility of a universal consciousness, it is essential to first grasp the complexity of the dimensions we live in. Scientists have long pondered the nature of our universe and its many layers. According to an article from Popular Mechanics, the study of quantum mechanics has revealed that our universe may consist of up to 37 dimensions. These dimensions are not just the three spatial dimensions and one time dimension we experience daily, but a plethora of hidden layers that could hold the key to understanding reality itself. The article in Popular Mechanics discusses a groundbreaking study where scientists manipulated some photons, or light particles. This experiment, led by researchers at the Technical University of Denmark, aimed to explore the limits of quantum behavior. In classical physics, we exist in three spatial dimensions plus time as a fourth. However, these photons required 37 different reference points to fully describe their state. This demonstrates that quantum physics can be even more non-classical and paradoxical than previously thought. The study also touches on quantum entanglement, where particles remain connected regardless of distance, and how this experiment could lead to new advancements in quantum systems. Imagine a world where our three-dimensional reality is just a thin slice of a much larger, more complex structure. This concept challenges our traditional views and opens the door to new paradigms of thought. As we delve deeper into this video, keep in mind that the nature of these dimensions could be intricately tied to the concept of a universal consciousness. Could it be that these hidden dimensions are the playground of a higher intelligence, a godlike consciousness that we are only beginning to comprehend? Join us as we explore these profound questions and more. Whether you are an atheist, agnostic, or a believer, the concept of God as a universal consciousness is a fascinating topic. In this video, we will explore the intersection of spirituality and science, particularly through the lens of quantum mechanics. Imagine a universe where every particle is interconnected, where consciousness itself might be the fabric that weaves reality together. Here, particles can be entangled across vast distances, suggesting a deeper, almost mystical connection that could hint at a universal consciousness. In this journey, we will delve into the hypothesis that the intricate mechanisms of quantum mechanics evoke a higher, godlike consciousness. We'll also navigate through the intriguing theories of solipsism and simulation, and how they could either negate or complement this cosmic idea. And finally, we'll explore the multiverse theory and perspectives. Prepare to question the very nature of reality and consciousness. Welcome to American Northwest Magazine. Please subscribe. Please consider pausing on these following textual descriptions displayed on the screen until you understand the three possibilities we will be addressing in this video. All three of them together on the screen are difficult to read, so we will zoom in to each one on the following sections. In our hypothesis, we posit that only one of the three scenarios are possible, and if any one of them are true, then the other two are false. We felt we needed to put this intro before the main part of the video just to reiterate what it's about and that there are two distinct possibilities. And in the second possibility, there are two variations. Our hypothesis of universal consciousness suggests that consciousness is interconnected throughout the universe via quantum entanglement and other quantum mechanisms, implying a higher godlike or all-encompassing consciousness. 2B posits that if solipsism is true, only one's own consciousness is certain to exist. This leads to the idea that our reality could be a simulation created by our own consciousness, a concept supported by Donald Hoffman's work at UC Irvine, which proposes that consciousness creates the reality we perceive. 2A suggests that if solipsism is not true but simulation theory is, then everyone's consciousness contributes to the simulation. This collective consciousness shapes the reality we all experience, 
aligning with Donald Hoffman's theory that consciousness is fundamental in creating our perceived reality. It's important reiterate that while these scenarios are intriguing, they are more than likely mutually exclusive, meaning they cannot all be true simultaneously. Stay with us as we delve into these thought-provoking scenarios and their implications on our understanding of reality. Can God be found in the quantum world? This is our latest version of this video as we endeavor to improve its content. We apologize if you have seen it already in a previous version because this will be very similar yet improved with slightly more content and improved media. This video is an awkward effort to present American Northwest Magazine's hypothesis that the intricate mechanisms of quantum mechanics evoke a universal consciousness, or in other words, God, and how solipsism and simulation theory could negate this, and how the multiverse and many worlds hypothesis relates to this possibility. We strive to avoid conflating these concepts as we attempt to form our hypothesis. By clarifying the distinctions between these ideas, we aim to prevent conflation and ensure a more precise discussion in this video. Constructive feedback is always welcome to further refine our exploration of these intriguing ideas. So, can God be found in the quantum world? The concepts in this video will be stretched outside of their accepted definitions in order to blend them together into different combinations in order to present our hypothesis. Let's begin by imagining God as the mycelium network in a forest which connects and sustains mushrooms. And of course, the mushrooms would represent conscious beings here on Earth or wherever they might be. In other words, visualize a universal consciousness or godlike consciousness connecting human minds and any other conscious beings in the universe and perhaps multiverse. This concept of universal energy, devoid of religious dogma, links us as nodes within this greater network of consciousness, unifying us all. Much like, as we described above, how mushrooms are connected through the mycelium network. Within the realm of quantum mechanics, quantum entanglement shows how particles remain connected across extreme distances, emphasizing our interconnected nature physically. And perhaps, as we are suggesting now, this quantum entanglement propagates this consciousness through the quantum realm through quantum entanglement and perhaps other quantum phenomena. Wikipedia defines quantum entanglement as the phenomenon of a group of particles being generated, interacting, or sharing spatial proximity in such a way that the quantum state of each particle of the group cannot be described independently of the state of the others, including when the particles are separated by a large distance. Einstein famously called entanglement spooky action at a distance, since the particles seem to be communicating faster than the speed of light which really seems to be a property or characteristic you would expect of God or a universal consciousness. How could this theory relate to or be affected by simulation theory? So simulation theory suggests that a superconsciousness might be crafting an intricate, ultra-realistic simulation of reality that we perceive through our senses as a physical reality. If this is the case, then our physical world, including quantum mechanics, doesn't really exist, therefore this consciousness is not related to or created by quantum mechanics. Meanwhile, solipsism, which, by the way, there's a link in the description to our video that describes solipsism, implies that only our own mind is certain to exist. I further propose that if we are the only conscious being in the universe, then there is no God or other consciousness, perhaps. So in combining solipsism and simulation theory, I propose that our individual consciousness, alone, creates our perceived reality. I presume this means that our consciousness is the only thing that actually exists, if solipsism and simulation theory are in fact true. This is an eerie, unsettling concept that causes me great consternation. The combination of these two theories being correct eliminates the need for, or perhaps even the ability for there to be a god or universal consciousness. So how does the many worlds theory relate to our exercise to this point? Envisioning multiple, potentially infinite parallel universes would not be a necessary component to our reality if solipsism and the simulation theory are correct. However, if solipsism and simulation theory are not correct, then quantum mechanics is real, and therefore the multiverse and many worlds theories would perhaps prevail. 
For every possible quantum state of a particle, there could be an alternate timeline, or in other words, an alternate or parallel universe, existing in the same location or space as our universe, but again, just on a different timeline. The many worlds theory and the multiverse concept, while related, propose different frameworks for understanding the nature of reality and the existence of parallel universes. The many worlds theory, a specific interpretation of quantum mechanics, suggests that every possible outcome of a quantum event leads to the creation of a parallel universe. These universes exist simultaneously, occupying the same space but unfold along different timelines due to the varied outcomes of quantum events. Essentially, in many worlds theory, all potential histories and futures are real, each existing in a separate yet non-interacting world. In contrast, the multiverse is a broader concept encompassing multiple distinct universes, each with its own unique set of physical laws, constants, and properties. These universes could be bubbles within a larger cosmic structure, membranes floating in higher dimensional spaces, or entirely separate realms with little to no interaction. In multiverse theory, parallel universes exist in different spaces and times, as opposed to many worlds theory where parallel universes are in the same spatial context, but on different timelines. So perhaps these parallel universes are linked by the same consciousness that is existing with and interfacing with our quantum mechanics, again assuming that solipsism and simulation theory are not true. This overarching consciousness links the unique clusters of each universe into a seamless existence. Reflecting on Donald Hoffman's perspective from his UC Irvine research and podcasts, he suggests that our consciousness creates our reality, and I think this can be tied to simulation theory, except that the simulation is created by our own consciousnesses. It's easier to imagine this to be true if you consider that this is much like dreams that our consciousness or subconsciousness probably create as an ultra-realistic simulation. I say probably because when considering the source of dreams, there could be another consciousness involved, assuming solipsism is not true. Hoffman also proposes the idea of conscious agents interacting to create the fabric of reality. This aligns with the possibility that our individual conscious experiences create the reality we perceive, highlighting the significance of consciousness in crafting our experience of the world. If this isn't a simulation and solipsism is not true, then within our quantum mechanical mechanisms, the ubiquitous energy of subatomic particles is the only presence of what we might call a universal consciousness instead of God. This eternal universal consciousness connects us as nodes within this greater consciousness, much like how mushrooms are connected through the mycelium network. Is it possible that our consciousness is eternal? Regardless of which scenario is true, there's anecdotal evidence that this is quite likely. Studies of near-death experiences have a common element within them where most people who have experienced them describe having knowledge during their out-of-body experiences that their consciousness is eternal. However, near-death experiences occur while the brain is still alive. So perhaps this evidence is not very convincing to the science world because we know our brains can experience very vivid dreams at times, and perhaps these are simply dreams. These hypotheses offer profound insights into the nature of existence and the potential connections between consciousness, physical reality, God, and the quantum realm. By engaging with these ideas, we explore the intricate web of interconnectedness that defines our perception of reality and our place within it, and whether God or a universal consciousness exists or not. Please continue watching for the bonus chapter about more of Donald Hoffman's work. Thank you for watching American Northwest Magazine, and please subscribe and click on the thumbs up icon. Please consider commenting on this content and sharing it. In this bonus chapter, we delve into the fascinating work of Donald Hoffman, a cognitive scientist and author known for his groundbreaking theories on perception and consciousness. Hoffman is a professor emeritus of cognitive sciences at the University of California, Irvine, where he has conducted much of his influential research. 
Hoffman's theories challenge traditional views of reality and perception, proposing that what we experience is more about survival than truth. Let's explore some of his key theories. Hoffman posits that our perceptions are like a user interface, similar to computer icons, evolved to help us survive and reproduce rather than to accurately represent reality. From an evolutionary perspective, natural selection prioritizes fitness over accuracy. Our sensory systems have evolved to present us with perceptions that enhance our chances of survival and reproduction, even if they do not reflect the true nature of the world. For example, colors are perceived simplifications of different wavelengths of light, aiding quick and effective interaction with the environment. Hoffman introduces the idea that reality consists of networks of conscious agents interacting with each other, rather than independent physical objects. He uses the metaphor of reality being like a network of conversations among conscious agents. Just as we can't see the actual data being transmitted over the internet, we can't perceive the true nature of reality. What we experience is a simplified interface that allows us to interact with other conscious agents. This implies that the physical world, as we perceive it, is an illusion created by our minds to navigate and survive in the environment. Hoffman's research includes evolutionary game theory models showing that perceptual strategies that maximize fitness are favored over those that accurately describe the world. His mathematical simulations demonstrate that organisms with perceptions tuned for survival are more likely to reproduce successfully than those with accurate perceptions. The probability that our perceptions reflect true reality is virtually zero. For instance, an organism that perceives a nutritious fruit as bright red is more likely to identify and consume it, increasing its chances of survival, regardless of whether the fruit is actually red in some objective sense. Hoffman also explores how different sensory modalities, such as vision, hearing, and touch, combine to create a cohesive perception of reality. Each sensory modality provides a unique interface tailored to specific survival needs, and together they create a unified experience of the world. For example, vision tells you the cup's color and shape, hearing the sound it makes when placed on a table, and touch its texture and temperature. These combined perceptions create a coherent experience of a coffee cup that is useful for interacting with the object, even if it doesn't reflect the cup's true nature. During his interview with Tom Bilyeu, Hoffman discussed the potential threats and implications of artificial intelligence. He explored how better understanding consciousness could help us navigate the development of AI and address concerns about AI becoming conscious. Hoffman emphasized the importance of recognizing the limitations and potential risks associated with advanced AI technologies. These theories offer us a new lens through which to view our existence challenging us to rethink our understanding of reality and consciousness. Donald Hoffman's model suggests that consciousness is fundamental, and that space-time and physical objects are emergent properties of interactions between conscious agents. He uses mathematical structures called to describe these interactions and introduces the concept of to map these interactions into geometric forms. This approach connects his theory to fundamental geometric structures like the which can derive space-time, particle physics, and quantum mechanics. While Hoffman doesn't explicitly mention 37 dimensions, his work involves complex geometric and probabilistic models that could be interpreted as involving multiple dimensions. By engaging with Hoffman's work, we gain a deeper appreciation for the complex interplay between perception, survival, and the true nature of the universe. Thank you for watching American Northwest Magazine. If you found this content enlightening, please subscribe, click the thumbs up icon, and consider sharing and commenting on this video.